Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another video for EVE Online. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Signal Cartel and Wormholes. Now, the reason I'm going to be talking about the corporation that I'm in isn't some kind of shameless plug or some kind of recruitment opportunity. No, far from it. What I'm trying to showcase here is a whole new playstyle, a different lifestyle, if you will, in regards to EVE Online, a whole new ethic in regarding to play. And it's kind of an ethic that I've taken across, actually, now into EVE Echoes as well. Um, I do apologize as well. I know I'm prone to saying EVE Echoes, EVE Online from time to time, um, it gets confusing when you cover both games and they have such similar names. Anyway, we're going to be talking about the Signal Cartel, who they are, what they do, why I love them. We're going to be talking about Thera and Wormholes, Thera being where I live, Wormholes being like my bread and butter day to day, and we're going to be looking at the Signal Cartel lifestyle and how this all comes together as a whole. I'm here in my Cheetah, the Lucid Echo. I love this ship to pieces. It's one of the ones I fly most. We're going to just have a little wander around and you guys are going to see what it is that I do on a day-to-day -day basis in EVE Online, basically. Now, if you do enjoy this video, as usual, please hit like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, ding that notification bell to never miss an upload, and if you do want to help support me do what I do, well, you can head across to Patreon where you can pledge to support there, and there's also a Redbubble merchandise store where you can grab some uh, exclusive swag in the comment section down below. All of that's down there, so you can check that out. Anyway, that all said and done then, let's talk about the Signal Cartel and Wormholes. So first of all, the Signal Cartel. Who are they? What do they do? Well, the Signal Cartel is a corporation in EVE Online, and they are part of the EVE Scout Alliance. Now, EVE Scout and the Signal Cartel mainly exist as wormholers and explorers. They are currently run by the illustrious Cartier Say, a name you may know as the person who sailed through every single system, wormhole and real space in EVE Online without losing a single ship. There is a monument to them in Sysio, um, which you can have a look at, fly out to, and I'll probably do a video on that as well. I want to explore New Eden with you guys and showcase how beautiful this place can be, um, especially as an explorer. It's not just about going out and earning the isk, you know. Um, but anyway, Signal Cartel and Eve Scout exist as a sort of rescue service to a certain extent. If you are exploring wormholes and you accidentally lose all of your uh, your probes or you fail to bookmark the wormhole entrance and you can't find it again, you can contact Eve Scout. There's an Eve Scout 911 channel um, that you can sort of contact them. They will come find you. They will come rescue you so here on screen now, stranded in a wormhole. Uh, contact Eve Scout Rescue 911. They will find you. They will help you get out of that wormhole. Um, we also stock up various different caches throughout wormhole space, so if you've kind of jumped through and you're like, oh damn, I've run out of all the materials and supplies that I need, you can look for these caches at the center of the wormhole. They'll then have the loot and stuff in that you need to get out. Eve Scout also runs a website. The Eve Scout Thera website is very useful. If you've ever wanted to come and visit Thera, which I'll undock into now as I'm talking, um, essentially they run this website where you can see from your current system where the nearest Thera wormhole is and um, jump in and come from there. Now, Thera is a really unique system. This is the only wormhole system that actually has its own station. In fact, it has four stations. You can hear, see behind me here the Sisters of Eve, um, the Paleo Cybernetics Laboratory, there's a surveillance station, there's a load of other stuff going on out here. Um, it's a really cool place, Thera. Um, the reason I love Thera is because essentially what you've got is a, a, a massive system. Like when I talk about massive, this is probably one of the biggest systems in EVE Online, and it is inside a wormhole. It's inside a Noah Kiss, which is the wormhole space um, kind of region, I guess. It means that I wake up every morning in EVE Online with a load of new connections. Imagine that the system you're docked in Every night, it would open a random number of stargates to random systems, some of them in high sec, low sec, null sec, in Galente space, Kaldari space, Mimitar space, Angel space, Gurista space, all the way out in Delve, you name it, uh, you know, the different holes open up and you can scan these down and basically pick a new area to explore every single day. 
Now, because my playstyle here at EVE Online is essentially exploration, I am going to cloak up here. Because my playstyle is primarily exploration, um, but also I tend to do things like the Apostle Dead Spaces, this is really useful for me because I can just pick any system I like, jump into it, go exploring, run a few Apostle Dead Spaces, whatever it is I want to do, and then I can either jump back into Thera or dock up in a new system, new station, until I find a closer wormhole. I have embraced the space nomad lifestyle and it's a really cool lifestyle. One of the things that some people like or dislike about uh, the whole uh, Signal Cartel as well is that they have a no PvP rule. I cannot join Bomber's Bar. I don't go out there and do any NPSI fleets. Um, I don't go out hunting in like my healer or my worm or whatever. Um, I just run the episode dead spaces in them. I can fire back if someone shoots at me, um, but for the most part, both Signal Cartel and Eve Scout are meant to be these benevolent, neutral, uh, sort of neutral groups, kind of like how the Red Cross is supposed to be in sort of an ideal situation, things like that. And um, we're there to help people, so it makes sense to not be attacking them and not go hunting. We remain neutral, we'll help anyone who needs our help, that kind of situation. Anyway, so wormholes. One of the cool things about wormholes is that they don't have local. Here you can see there is no local in this wormhole. If I were to speak and say something, my name will suddenly appear, but now everyone knows I'm in system. The point is, I have no idea how many people are actually in this particular system with me, inside Thera with me. There could be hundreds of people, there could be no one, I could be completely on my own, but it's impossible for me to tell because there's no local. It's also completely null sec. There's no Concord status here whatsoever. If someone shoots me, ain't nothing gonna happen. No, you know, other than I die because obviously I'm in a cheater at the moment. Um, no, nothing will happen. There's no Concord. There's no defensive systems here. If you get shot at, you get shot at. It is just as simple as that. But why would you exist inside wormholes? Well, numerous different reasons, because wormholes themselves, as I said, you've got that whole ability to fly to different areas and to sort of explore anywhere at any time that you like. They've also got ver a variety of different combat sites, they've got different scanning sites, all of this kind of thing actually inside the wormholes themselves. In fact, there have been some excellent articles written that I'll try to remember to link in the description down below. Um, Ashy, I know is a big one, Ashy in Space writes a fantastic Eve Online blog um, where she talks about a lot of her time in wormhole space and does a brilliant article exactly why would you live in wormhole space and talks all about this kind of stuff there. Um, and the way she describes it is that you can be chaotic evil, that wormholes are a great place to hunt from. They can be just this place where you roll out of a wormhole and go hunting and then come home to safety later. You can be lawful neutral, wormholes to PvP in, or like me, I go exploring and all this kind of thing as well. Um, neutral good, wormholes to make iskin. Um, just if you just want to make a bit of money, wormholes can be an amazing place. Um, it's an amazing place to go crabbing and just have a bit of fun in. In that sense, there's some really good, you know, whether you're going for the low class or the high class, once you learn to understand wormholes and how these actually work, well, they're pretty cool and there's a lot you can do with them. Now, I'm just going to use a bookmark here. Rather than spend some time actually scanning all of these down, I'm just going to use a bookmark to jump to a particular wormhole in order to showcase these. Because one of the confusing things is that people tend to miss misrepresent the difference between J space or W space, the space actually inside wormholes, um, and the wormholes themselves. A wormhole is just a, a hole in space-time um, that you can fly through that will take you from A to B, wherever that A to B is. Some wormholes lead from, you might find a wormhole in Heck, for example, that you jump through and it takes you straight through to Jeta. Vice versa, you might find something in Jeta that takes you straight through to Amar or other systems like that. You can kind of get a feel for what a wormhole is when you look at it, which we'll talk about in a second, by the way. Um, but essentially, you can use them as quick ways to jump around, but some wormholes take you out of K-space, or known space, into a whole new region known as Anoikis, or Anoikis, or Anoikis, or however the heck you want to pronounce that, um, which are the wormholes themselves. Like Thera, this does not appear on any map. You're not going to see Thera connected to any other system other than via wormholes. Now, wormholes themselves do connect to other wormholes sometimes. You can jump from a wormhole into, from one J space, sorry, into another J space with connecting wormholes. 
Basically, the way to think of JSpace is that these are systems that don't have permanent stargates into or out of them. If you're in Hick, for example, you know which station, which uh, gates you can jump through and which systems are nearby, and that doesn't really change much, does it? Whereas if you're in Thera, every morning there, or every few hours even, because they cycle, they grow, they shrink, they collapse, um, these, you'll have all these different openings leading to different systems, high sec, low sec, null sec, or even other um, Anoikis systems. Now, once you arrive at a wormhole, you can then hit show info on it, and you'll get some information here about it. So in this case, an unstable wormhole deep in space, wormholes of this kind usually collapse after a few days and can, be, and can lead to anywhere. Now, this wormhole seems to lead into high security space, and indeed, if we are to look at the wormhole, you can actually do a visual identifier here. Now, because it's got this, you can clearly see here, this is Minmatar space, right? There's no two ways about it, that is the Minmatar space background, and that is showing you exactly where that is then going to lead. We know that is going to be Minmatar. It then says, this wormhole is beginning to decay and probably won't last another day. Ultimately, that means this has still got a decent amount of time left on it. Wormholes do collapse after a certain period of time or after a certain amount of mass has gone through. This wormhole has not yet had its stability significantly disrupted by ships passing through it. So you can see there, that's the whole mass thing. The more ships go in and out of it and the more massive those ships are, the faster this wormhole will decay and collapse. And then up to medium-sized ships can pass through this wormhole. And if we actually zoom out a bit, again, a lot of this can be visually showcased as well. So the center of the wormhole shows you where it's going. In this case, Minmatar space. This coloration around the side, this gives you the mass restriction of the wormhole. If it's a royal blue color, then it will only allow frigate mass ships up to 5 million kilograms. Once it's this kind of coloration you see here, this sort of teal aurora, this means that medium-sized ships, cruisers, battle cruisers, industrials, can pass through up to 20 million kilograms. That's how much can go through each time. If it was a grey aurora around it, that highlights that the wormhole allows every ship below capital, so 300 million kilograms or lower, to pass through it. And if it's a yellow aurora, or a golden aurora some people refer to it as, that indicates that freighters and capitals can transfer through as well. Even uh, Sometimes it's only a million kilograms, um, sometimes it's all, sorry, uh, a billion kilograms, sometimes it's all the way up to 1.8 billion kilograms. Um, and you can what you know you can figure that out by the coloration there and the size of the ship that you can take through these now ultimately we can see most of this through this information page as well but once you get good at just remembering all of that it's a nice easy way to spot what this wormhole can and can't do so today I'm happy this is a decent enough wormhole we're going to jump through this we're going to go to enter wormhole I'm going to drop my cloak because of course I need to drop my cloak and we're going to just use the micro warp drive to close that distance nice and quickly jump through this wormhole into the system beyond. Now I know where this one's going, but theoretically obviously you could just jump through and try and figure this out for yourself. Now the first thing to do is while you've still got your gate cloak in inverted commas on there, is just have a look in local. Is there anyone nearby who might be just about to pounce on you? And if there is, well obviously treat it like any type of gate camp situation. For now though, I'm gonna double tap in space, I'm gonna turn on my cloak there, um, and then I'm going to drop myself just a nice constant speed as we move away from this. Now from this side, you can now see the same visual identification that we saw before. It's still got that medium aurora around it, that sort of cyan teal aurora about it. And if I were to go to the more info on this, show info, then it's going to tell me pretty much what I saw before. Other than this time, it's going to announce that it is a unique and mysterious Thera system beyond. And that can actually be uh, shown as well, I'm moving away from it, but by that graphic in the center of the wormhole, you can clearly see what is inside that. Um, that is then Thera or a, a C13 uh, wormhole as well, I think is another one that can be there. I think it's any of the, the shattered wormholes, I think use that same um, icon there, but it does clearly say that if we click on it and then go to information there, which is long click and left, um, it does clearly state mysterious Thera system. Now for the time being, I am going to stop the ship where we are. I'm then going to launch my probes. Well, okay, I'm gonna drop my cloak first, then launch my probes, and we're gonna see what is actually in this system. So those are out, gonna drop, uh, put the cloak back on, and then we can either you know go through our usual scanner way like this, not directional scanner, sorry, probe scanner, or we could go in with the, uh, the shift P uh, shortcut. 
Now here we have a view of the system. We can see already we've got a drone gathering site um, and an angel refugee site. But we've got some other cosmic signatures around as well. Now, based on where we currently are, we know one of these is going to be the wormhole that we have just jumped out of. And spoiler alert, it's going to be that one that we're right next to, really, isn't it? It's not going to be the ones much further afield because, well, we already know that it's a wormhole because we've just jumped through it. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of these cosmic signatures. I'm going to highlight it. Let's go for the one that's furthest away, which is there, 8.58 AU. And I'm going to use my scanning here just to try and get this as central to this sphere as possible. Rotate the camera around and get my probes right towards the center of that. And I am actually going to make these just a little bit bigger to start analyzing and bring this down. Now I will do a guide on scanning at some point in the future to give you a proper idea of exactly how and why this works. I've done a brief introduction to scanning already here on YouTube, um, but for the time being, it's just to get a feel for what is actually going on here. And oh my goodness, we've got three points there, which we're going to now narrow that search down to. I wanna to move to this side of those lines. When you get lines, it's usually the, si the, the side of the line that was furthest away from where you originally started scanning. Um, we're going to go down to just a standard 4 AU here and see what else we find. I'm not doing this particularly efficiently, by the way, because I want to talk and just showcase some nice graphics and things going on. Um, normally I can scan things down a lot faster than this. There we are, we now have an idea of what some of these are. We've got a relic site, we've got a data site, and we've got a combat site. Now that combat site I can ignore. I mean, a, a cheater, I don't have any combat potential. I'm not gonna run a combat site. Data sites and relic sites, however, these are interesting. So let's have a look at one of those. There's the relic site. Where are you on the map? There we are, okay. So let's now narrow in on you, because I wouldn't mind doing a relic site. These can have some pretty good loot in them and ultimately exploration and relic sites and things like that is what I do best. I'm gonna move this right down here. I'm then gonna go for the pinpoint um, formation rather than the big ones there. And we're gonna narrow that right down. I reckon we can probably go all the way down to one astronomical unit. Scan, see what happens. Maybe I've gone too far, we'll see. See what we get, those probes move into position. They scan, they analyze, they send back the data. And oof, there we are. We now have a crumbling angel relic site. So I'm now gonna warp to within 10 kilometers, close all of this down for the time being. You can see I am still cloaked, good. Obviously, covert ops ship don't wanna be shot at. Crumbling ancient uh, angel excavation. Ancient ruins stand silent and still in the cold vacuum of space, a sober reminder of times long since past. A relic analyzer module will be vital in gaining a deeper understanding of the numerous artifacts located here and finding something of value among the rubble. Cool, so now that we're here, we can start locking on to some of these different things here. Obviously, I'm cloaked, so I can't just yet. And we are going to approach this particular one. I'm gonna drop the cloak. We're gonna put the micro warp drive on to get close to that graphics. Yeah, 23 kilometers, can never remember exactly what my lock is. So once we're in 23 kilometers, we're going to lock onto that. We are then going to, uh, I'm actually okay at the moment, just doing a standard orbit, turn the uh, a standard approach, turn the, warp, uh, the micro warp drive off, activate, our relic analyzer, assuming I'm close enough, of course, I bounced off it because I'm too busy talking and not busy enough concentrating on where we actually are in regards to this. I could also orbit this um, and I can set my orbit. It's currently 30 kilometers. I'd set a much closer orbit than that. I'm just gonna move here until we get a little bit closer. Good thing about the cheetah compared to some of the other scanners is it's got pretty good impulse speed, like sub thruster speed. Um, isn't bad on it at all. Once we're within 6Ks, we will activate the Relic Analyzer, and that's when we can have some fun um, shooting, well, opening up the uh, minigame. If you're following me from Eve Echoes, by the way, you may never have seen the minigame before. It's awesome. It's this. It's kind of like Minesweeper in reverse. So you tap on these and it'll tell you where you are. Oh, yay. We'll take that and we'll use that straight away. We can then tap on these and see how far away we are. Oh, again, we're getting all the tools. I'm happy getting more tools. Um, let's go here. It's going to be five away from there. Four. Three. Oh, we've got a site that we need to defend through. That's fine. I can fight that too. One away. Hopefully it's this one. There it is. That is the central point. We attack it with virus cohesion. A successful hack. I can now open that and loot what was inside. What was inside? Oh, okay. Fine. Cool. So that one done. We can now move. 
towards the next one. And again, we're going to micro warp drive in to be that little bit faster. I'm going to go single activation this time. Hopefully I don't bounce off it quite as badly as I did before. And we are, we can lock on. I can actually also now unlock target on the previous one. There we go. Uh, we're going to bounce off it again. I'm just going to set an orbit, I think, for future. Let's right click, set default orbit distance, and we're going to go 5,000 meters. Okay. So once again, we are here now. Let us relic analyzer on the right box, Benzi, on the correct box. There we are. So let's go through this time. Three points away, two points away, one point away. It's going to be, no, that's just that. Three points, three points two points, one point, there we go, no, another one of these, there we are, we've got another item, let's use these, get my coherency back up, two, and nice defense node, that should be our final one, cool, let's go through, and system hack successful, again, I will explain in another video how that actually works, I'm just having a bit of fun here and showcasing kind of the stuff we can get, Open cargo, smash trigger units, nice. More rig material. Um, again, let's uh, unlock target and right click. Unlock target, one box left. We are going to approach this one. No, we're not, we're gonna orbit this one, aren't we? Because we've just set the point. Single micro warp drive use. Once we're within six Ks. There we are, activate the Relic Analyzer. Come on. It's always when I do this kind of thing for a video, isn't it? I fly in the most embarrassing ways possible. Anyway, we're coming close to now the 5,000 meter orbit. Micro Warp Drive is off. Still no one else around. You should really play zoomed out on this um, so that you can see if anyone does decide to jump in on you. Here we are. Let's use the Relic Analyzer and have a look. Three points, two points, one point. I tried to go around the outside for the most part. Cool, pick up one part. One part means it's gonna be that one. It's another part there. One part, come in, another bonus. These are quite useful, self-repair. There you see my life on the left-hand side there. Basically, it's life goes up. Uh, two parts, one part, this one. Hey, defensive system. Next one, two away, so it's going to be back down this way. There's the final part. Let's activate this up. This little kernel rot, and nice and easy. We now loot it, open cargo. Obviously, I need to be closer than the 5,000 away, but there we go. I can now close in on that cargo. Loot it. Nothing in there. This is why you should really use a cargo scanner. I do actually have a cargo scanner fitted, but hey, it's more fun to showcase this kind of thing, right? And that's basically it. That's what I do. I would now from here pick another system, just randomly in uh, in system here, open up my travel tag, pick one of the gates, jump through it, and then just go exploring the local area, see what else I can find around here. For the time being though, I'm just going to warp back to the Thera wormhole, I'm going to head into Thera, dock up, and that'll be me for today for this video. And that's what I like about this. This is why I live in wormholes. I can just pick a system like this. I can jump out. I can go exploring, find some stuff, sell it at the uh, like any station that I so fancy, because I'm not tied into a local station per se. I don't have to just sell oh, Jita or Heck or Rents or Dodixie or, 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 because that's just where I'm based out of. Here I can be based out of everywhere and anywhere at the same time. And to me, that's just a really cool, attractive way of doing things because I can do whatever the hell I want when I want. As I said, I have embraced the space nomad lifestyle. I can go scanning in any region. I can go uh, and run abyssal dead spaces from anywhere. So I don't have to worry about, you know, oh, do I need to be stuck in a system that's going to be fairly safe? I can literally pick a low traffic, high security system and just run an abyssal dead space and it create a quick safe point. Um, well, not even create a safe point because it's an abyssal dead space, you know, um, they can be scanned down. But you know what I mean? I can just go out into a high sec system, activate a couple of filaments, run a few dead spaces, have a bit of fun there. And again, I know I'm not doing an autodoc bookmark here. Um, 
I can activate a few filaments, run a few dead spaces, make some gear, and I can actually pick which station I want to go to, whichever one's closest to me, um, or I've got a good connection to on that particular day. Some days I wake up and I've got a connection that is literally two, like one or two jumps away from Jeter. The next day I'm one or two jumps away from Dodixie. Next day I'm three or four jumps away from Heck. I can go wherever I like and do whatever I like. And has this been lucrative for me? Well, in addition to just being amazingly good fun, if I open up my inventory here, I'm currently equipped with, if we go into the ship hangar, I've currently just in this station, let alone ones that I've still got elsewhere, I've got my worm, I've got my healer, I've got my uh, lucid echo and uh, vibrant echo, my cheetah and my buzzard. I recently bought myself a Tengu because why the hell not? I've yet to properly undock this and have fun with it in some of the more aggressive wormhole combat sites and things, but for the time being, I'm happy just wandering and exploring and seeing what's out there. As I said, I intend to run a series of videos for you guys just showcasing the different sites to see in EVE Online, running some of these different areas, whether it's Gita 44's like a colossal undock, whether it's the Cartier Say Memorial in Sysio, whether it's Old Man Star, whether it's the EVE Gate. These are things I want to showcase to you guys and maybe talk a little bit about the lore. If that's something you're interested in, please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to know what you guys want to see from me, what kind of content you would like to see me do here on EVE Online. I'm an explorer, I do the Abyssal Dead Spaces as well, I like to just fly around and experience what the game has. And I know that's crazy, some people call me insane because, you know, it's not a good way of making ISK, right? I don't care about making ISK. You can see I can make ISK when I need to by running things like Dead Spaces, excellent ISK per hour generation there, but for the most part, I play EVE for the experience. Anyway folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. What do you think of the Space Nomad lifestyle? What do you think about Thera and wormholes in general? What areas would you like to see me explore? What content would you like to see me make? Let me know this and more in the comment section down below. Otherwise folks, thank you for watching right the way through to the end. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden!